Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. The Worcester Police Department and the Worcester Black Clergy Alliance are set to meet on Thursday after concerns were raised in the aftermath of recent shootings across the country. Tuesday, Police Chief Stephen Sargent says he is saddened by all of the violence, but is proud of the way the Worcester police officers conduct themselves. Chief Sargent says his department remains vigilant and officers are always cautious. He says his department goes through training twice a year, so officers, officers are always learning new tactics to work with the community. This past Sunday, a Worcester police officer was stabbed in the face while apprehending a suspect. Sargent says their training teaches them to refra refrain from using their firearms unless absolutely necessary. You know, to be able to, to know what to do in that situation, his training, whenever a situation that comes up, you're always going to revert back to your training. And, you know, his training obviously took him, you know, t nice, nobody got injured up there. on the other side. He was arrested without incident. Chief Sargent says he plans on working one on one with the Black Clergy Alliance to ensure officers are working with the community to keep everyone safe. Our offices in the neighborhoods regularly, all our offices know, you know, they're well trained, they're in the community, they're, they're speaking to, you know, all portions of our community. Everybody is out there doing their, you know, doing their work. A Worcester woman is facing multiple charges, including assault and battery with a dangerous weapon after police say she used a dating app to meet men and rob them. Police were notified of two separate incidents in July where men responded to Decatur Street to meet with 22-year-old Pauline Coe. Coe used the dating app Meet Me to set up the encounters with men. The two victims say they were robbed of cash in their cell phones and assaulted during the robberies. Police are still looking for two male suspects. Two New England troopers have been charged as a result of an arrest made at the end of a police chase in May. The controversial beating of a suspect was caught on live TV. Mass State Trooper Joseph Flynn and New Hampshire State Trooper Andrew Monaco are charged with simple assault. The pair were caught on aerial footage repeatedly punching and kicking 50-year-old Richard Simone of Worcester on May 11th. Simone led officers on a chase from Holden, Massachusetts to Nashua, New Hampshire. He eventually surrendered and got down on his knees when he was assaulted by the two troopers. Donald Trump is no longer the Republican Party's presumptive nominee. He is now the official GOP's presidential nominee. During the roll call vote, Trump easily won the delegates needed to capture the nomination, despite some states attempting to award delegates to Trump's competitors. Former Massachusetts Senator Scott Brown is at the RNC in Cleveland. He says allowing it to happen was a mistake by convention organizers. Senator, you have to admit at the very least it's a huge distraction for yeah, the Trump campaign. Of course, campaign. it's an unforced error, and I've said it before. Those are the things that, that, that hurt this campaign, and, and it comes down to basically uh, not uh, having the experience politically to deal with these things and not checking and rechecking and checking and rechecking. And, you know, lesson, lesson learned. Among tonight's featured speakers were New Jersey Governor Chris Christie as well as two of Donald Trump's children. Tonight, a local restaurant opens their doors to a unique opportunity for guests. The Fix Burger Bar gave a sneak peek of their new location on Grove Street. The restaurant was previously located on Shrewsbury Street, but decided to move when a larger space was available. Entry to the event was $30, and all proceeds go to the Hope Lodge and the Pancreatic Cancer Alliance. Mike Cavino is the owner of The Fix and says tonight is important for them and the community. So tonight was a great way for us to offer our people a quick you know, tour of the new spot, have a cocktail, have a beer, have some food on us, and at the same time make a donation to both of those. So it was a good way for us to practice in the kitchen, get our feet wet, showcase our new space that we spent uh, the last five months building. The Fix opens to the public for dinner tomorrow at 4.30. Health officials are urging residents to protect themselves from the West Nile virus after more mosquitoes in Worcester tested positive for the virus. Worcester, Auburn and Millbury now raising their threat level from low to moderate risk, risk for West Nile. Our Andy Madison spoke with health experts and has a look at how concerned residents should be. It's the time of year when many people are outside. Tomorrow we have a trip to the beach. You know, last week we did a couple trips you know, where there's, where there's mosquitoes. Mosquito and bug bites are one thing to watch out for in the summer. 
They also have health officials raising risk levels in central Massachusetts. We don't want to cause alarm. It's really more cause for making sure you, you're taking the right action. Several mosquitoes tested positive for the virus in Worcester earlier this month. No human cases have been detected. Health officials say the best way to protect yourself from contracting the virus is to wear bug spray and long sleeves if possible, especially if outdoors in the morning or evening hours. Mosquitoes can also strike around the house, especially if there's standing water. If you're filling the bird feeders, you know, change, change the bird bath. Um, don't leave water um, standing in any area of the yard. West Nile virus can cause meningitis, can cause encephalitis, which is an infection in the brain, can cause um, a polio-like syndrome where the spinal cord is affected and people get paralysis in an arm or a leg, and it may or may not get better. Residents should look out for symptoms like flu-like illness and fever. Last year, 10 people were infected with the West Nile virus in Massachusetts. None have been reported so far this year. Just be smart about being outside. And health officials are trying to make sure it stays that way. Andy Madison, Worcester News Tonight. Now, health officials say people over the age of 50 are the most vulnerable to the West Nile virus. Middleborough has also reported a mosquito testing positive for the triple E virus this month. Police in Worcester are looking for two men wanted for a violent armed robbery on Preston Street. The incident happened around 11 Sunday night. Two male victims told officers they were sitting in a parked car when two other men approached the vehicle. One of the suspects allegedly demanded money from the driver, then punched him in the face. The two men then got into a fight, during which the suspects allegedly pistol whipped the victim, causing cuts to his head, bruises, and broken teeth. The victim was treated at the hospital. More warnings about the new Pokemon Go game. The Better Business Bureau is warning players of privacy hacks that have been happening along with safety issues. Our Brittany Schaefer has more. I think it's wonderful that they have uh, retained their sense of humor at this time. Following recent law tragedies, some local police departments are trying to stay positive with humor. I hope that uh, a lot of people understand that um, our job isn't just to go out and make arrests and to hand out tickets and that they understand that you know, there is a personal side to law enforcement. Charlton Police Department posted on Facebook this morning, quote, just to be clear, I was looking for a poker stop is not an acceptable reason for being on the back porch of someone's house with a crowbar at two o'clock in the morning. The post has reached more than 800 likes and 300 shares. The department says it is aimed at keeping a close relationship with officers and the community. The goal for us to be involved in social media is to reach out to the community. I think it's positive that they're trying to like reach out to the community in a different way because I mean there's a negative attitude towards police in certain people's eyes. And I feel like for them to be able to work with like Pokemon itself and make it more humorous and get catch people's attention that way I think it's great. This is a very popular popular game right now and it's very active in social media so to get these messages out that are lighthearted I think it's a it's a wonderful opportunity for them. While the Charlton Police Department's post is meant for laughs, there are serious safety warnings around the game. There have been incidents in which people have been using that uh, certain that particular app for uh, criminal activity. People really get absorbed into the game and they lose track of what's going on around them. So that's the biggest safety issue. The Better Business Bureau of Central New England released guidelines Tuesday on privacy, expenses, and safety within the game. In order to play the game, you have to give it access uh, to your GPS, to your camera, um, a lot of the functions of um, your smartphone, and so there is a concern about privacy. Brittany Schieffer, Worcester News Tonight. For the first time since 2009, Massachusetts shoppers will not get an August sales tax holiday. House and Senate leaders will not take up the proposal, blaming the state's fiscal situation, which has prompted cuts throughout state government. They say the state cannot afford to lose an estimated $26 million if the sales tax is suspended for one weekend in August. Massachusetts has held sales tax holidays every year but one since 2004.